I want to show you how to set up a part on the rotary table. I've done this enough times that I think I could actually do a little lesson like how I'm going to do now. On my machine, I've got this scraped flat surface meant for uh, precisely setting up parts and fixtures on the machine. I also have a parallel with holes in it, uh, you know, keyed into the table. And let's get a one, two, three block, and we're going to square this parallel up to that scraped part there. At this point, I can lock up the, uh, you know, the handle here, and I'll check that one more time. Yeah. Now we want to get the table, the rotary table, centered with the spindle of our milling machine. Most people do it with the test indicator with, on a uh, spindle mount. I'm going to do it with the Blake coaxial indicator. At this point, what I like to do is I like to make a mark with a grease pencil on uh, this part of the machine for the x-axis <clears throat> and another point down here for the y-axis. And of course we'll also zero our dials. Now what I'll do is I'll put in an edge finder raise the table up until this is in line with the non-moving part of the edge finder. Now what we'll do is we'll take an adjustable parallel and get it just loose enough. Again, we're wiping everything off. I'll spread out the adjustable parallel. Snug up the screws with as short of a screwdriver as you could find. So this is a 3 8 edge finder. And our distance from the fence to that edge finder is 1 inch and 200 thousandths. So now we're going to do just a little, a little uh, math here. One inch, two hundred thousandths, plus half of the diameter of the edge finder. So that's plus one eight seven, three sixteenths, half of three eighths, and so we get. 1 inch and 387 and that's the distance from the fence here to the center of the spindle. Now we want the part that we put on the rotary table to be in line with the center of the x-axis because what we don't want is we don't want a part where the uh, the radius we're going to turn is off center of the part. That's no good. So we want to center the part with its center to the center of the rotary table. Because I want a radius through the whole part and not just through, you know, half of the part or less than all the way through, I'm going to raise it up on a 1, 2, 3 block. And so this 1, 2, 3 block center has to be in line with the center of the table and the center of the spindle. I want to take one inch away from this one inch 387 that we measured. And so that's 387 because 
halfway across a two inch block is one inch. I take a smaller adjustable parallel and you could do it with gauge blocks. I like to do that too. With our small adjustable parallel set to 387, that should position a one, two, three block with its center centered to the table. Now what we want to do is we want to find the distance that we need to put the part so that it is centered on the one, two, three block. So what we do first is we want to measure the part. This part is one inch, three ten. Again, it's a two inch block. We're going to take two inches and subtract one inch, three ten from that. That gives us 690. 690 will be as if I were to square this edge to the edge of that part and and this would be it. So what I want to do is I want to take that whatever this measurement is, 690 in our case, and cut that in half. And then we'll set gauge blocks or um, another adjustable parallel to that. So 690 divided by 2 is 345. I already have a gauge block stack set to 345. 200, 145, so that's 345. What I can do now is I can square the part on the 1, 2, 3 block by putting my gauge block stack there and a parallel there and I'll push I'm pushing the parallel against I'm pushing this parallel against the block the part against the gauge block stack and on the other side of this is this adjustable parallel and I've got my work overhanging and so now now this is centered with the x-axis. A good way to check your work is to take that same stack of gauge blocks and move it over to the other side. And if the transition from the gauge block to the 1, 2, 3 block is number 1, seamless, and number 2, also the same on the other side, then you're good. Then your part is truly square to the block. If this part is already stuck out the right amount, then we can start to clamp it down right now. But the other thing I want to do is I want to set the distance to the center of the spindle roughly to uh, the radius I want to cut. This part has to match the radius of this part. And what we have here is 1 inch 5, 5, 1. So I would like to put the end of the radius, half of that 1 inch 5, 5, 2 from the center of the spindle. So I would like to put this 776 away from the spindle. Your situation will probably not be the same as mine here, but I've done a little trick to um, help me judge how far out this part should stick off of the block and where the block should be so that it's 
out of the way of the cutter when I go to cut it. And the, the part that this radius must match against has a one inch hole reamed in it, and here's a, a <clears throat> half inch hole reamed in it, and here's a half inch edge finder. So this part is a good distance away. Now that we've determined our part is square with the table, we can start clamping it down. And we're not going to touch this lock, not till we're done setting up. We're going to take off this fence we made, and if anything goes wrong, well, we've got to start all over again, so make sure nothing goes wrong. And if it does go wrong, just go back to beginning. We will want to be aware of the amount that we want to infeed and the diameter of our, of our cutter, of course. And so our number was 776 that we want to uh, bring the center of the spindle to but we will have to subtract half the diameter of the cutter, so that 776 is going to become, since this is a half inch cutter, I'm going to take off 250 from that. That will then be 526. So that will be my infeed on the dial. Now that the part is square and securely clamped down, we can start milling. Another thing you could do once uh, once you've got the part clamped in, because I've got to flip this part around and do a different radius on this side, is I've got this right angle square clamped to the back of the block, and now I can take my part off, and so long as I put the corner of the block into the corner of this square, then I'll know I haven't changed the orientation of the block. I hope all that made sense. I know it's a pretty complicated way of doing this setup, but I've found what works for me. Maybe somebody has a simpler way of doing it, and believe me, I'd love to hear about it. Hopefully, I've helped somebody who, like me, is just getting into using their own table.